It is the year 2055. The world outside your window no longer resembles the one you grew up in. Skyscrapers breathe with green walls and vertical farms. Roads are quiet corridors where autonomous vehicles glide in perfect rhythm. Drones sweep the skies, not just delivering packages, but repairing infrastructure and monitoring the air we breathe. Step inside and the home feels alive. Walls shift colors to match your mood. Temperature adjusts automatically and a calm AI voice greets you with updates tailored to your day. Breakfast is printed on demand, designed to meet your body's exact needs. The air is cleaner than it has been in centuries. Solar towers, tidal generators, and orbital power satellites keep cities glowing with renewable energy. Daily life in 2055 is efficient, elegant, and strangely intimate. An environment that knows you almost as well as you know yourself. The future hasn't just arrived, it has quietly woven itself into every corner of existence. Beneath our skin, nanotechnology patrols the body like an invisible immune system. Nanobots dissolve clots before strokes happen, repair cells as they tear, and neutralize pathogens instantly. Medicine is no longer reactive, it is preventive. Illness has become a rarity. But nanotech also reaches into the mind. Brain computer interfaces allow humans to link directly with the digital world. Thoughts summon information instantly. Students join thought networks, solving problems together by sharing memory and focus. Phones and keyboards are relics. Cognition itself has become the interface. This merging of biology and technology has birthed cognitive expansion, a partnership where human creativity is amplified by machine precision. Yet questions remain. If our minds can be connected, what becomes of privacy? If our intelligence is enhanced, what remains uniquely human? Nanotech has erased many boundaries, but it has also blurred the definition of identity itself. By 2055, artificial intelligence has become the nervous system of civilization. It manages transport grids, energy networks, healthcare, and finance. But its most profound shift is personal. Nearly everyone lives with an AI companion, part tutor, part assistant, part collaborator. These companions write alongside us, analyze with us, and even debate us. Architects design with AI co-creators that simulate cities before they're built. Musicians compose harmonies with digital partners. Scientists run millions of experiments in hours with the help of machine colleagues. Work is no longer about repetition, it's about imagination. Humans provide the spark, AI provides the scale. Together, they generate what neither could alone. Yet with partnership comes paradox. Who owns a song co-written by AI? Who is accountable when algorithms reshape lives? In 2055, AI is not a servant or master. It is a mirror and collaborator reflecting the best and worst of us. The fossil fuel era is over. Energy now flows from a planetary web of solar towers, ocean turbines, and orbital satellites balanced by AI to meet demand with precision. Power is clean, abundant, and intelligent. Cities themselves have evolved into ecosystems. Buildings are wrapped in vertical forests that filter air and provide food. Bridges and roads are made of self-healing materials. Parks flood deliberately to absorb storms, then return to playgrounds and fields. Homes generate and trade energy, forming neighborhood grids. By 2055, humanity finally stopped building cities against nature and began building them with nature. Cities are no longer machines of steel and smoke. They are living systems balanced and resilient. Movement has transformed. Highways are silent streams of autonomous fleets where crashes are rare. Hyperloop systems connect megacities, turning day-long journeys into short commutes. Personal drones and autonomous shuttles make regional travel seamless. Beyond Earth, humanity has taken root. Orbital stations serve as hubs for science and tourism. The moon hosts outposts, mining resources, and testing sustainable habitats. Mars has its first small colonies, clusters of domes where people live, work, and dream of permanence. Space travel is still expensive, but routine enough to feel normal. For children of 2055, the stars are no longer unreachable. They are destinations. Exploring space was never only about ambition, it taught us survival, how to recycle every drop of water, build closed ecosystems, and thrive in extremes. 
Those lessons return home, shaping life on a fragile earth. Reality in 2055 is layered. The metaverse is no longer a gimmick, but a second dimension of existence. People shop in hybrid markets, attend global festivals, and collaborate in shared workspaces that feel as real as the physical world. Families are never apart. A parent working in orbit can appear at the dinner table in full presence. Ancestors live on as digital twins, adding stories to family gatherings. Culture has become hybrid. Art blooms in both paint and pixels. Music spans physical and virtual amphitheaters. And even spirituality unfolds in digital temples and gardens. But abundance of connection created scarcity of attention. In 2055, the rarest skill is presence. The choice to log off, to be fully here, to meet another human eye to eye. Cash is gone. Money flows through decentralized systems of digital currencies, energy credits, and smart contracts. Devices trade automatically. A car negotiates its own repairs. A refrigerator orders groceries. Reputation has become the true currency. Every project, every collaboration contributes to a reputation wallet, a record of trust and reliability that functions as both resume and passport. Work itself is project-based and global. People form teams with personal AIs to design, invent, and solve. Value is measured in outcomes, not hours. A designer can license a 3D template and earn royalties worldwide. A musician co-creates with AI and receives transparent micropayments for every stream. Opportunity is abundant, but inequality persists. The connected thrive, the disconnected risk being left behind. The economy of 2055 is fluid, creative, and relentless. Health in 2055 is predictive. Nanomedicine and AI spot disease years in advance. Cancer and heart disease are manageable. People live longer and better. A century of life no longer feels extraordinary, but expected. But the deeper shift lies in memory. The brain-computer interface allow minds to be preserved as digital twins. Families speak with echoes of loved ones long after death, maintaining bonds that once ended with mortality. For some, it is comforting. For others, unsettling. If the voice of your parents still speaks, if their stories continue, have they truly gone? Digital immortality has softened death but blurred its meaning. In conquering biology, we now face a greater challenge, defining what it means to live fully, even when life can echo endlessly in code. By 2055, technology dazzles. Nanobots heal us. AI collaborates with us. Cities breathe with us. Space invites us. The metaverse extends us. Humanity has stretched its reach further than ever before. But the real question is not what we can do, it is who we become. A city can adapt, but will it be just? A digital twin can comfort, but will it replace the value of presence? An AI can co-create, but will we still accept responsibility for what is built? The soul of the future is not in machines, but in meaning. We can extend life, but will we deepen wisdom? We can connect the planet, but will we nurture empathy? We can live in two worlds, but will we remember to be fully human? The greatest risk is not that machines will outsmart us, but that we will lose ourselves in the abundance they create. The challenge of 2055 is stewardship. Ensuring progress serves humanity rather than consuming it. The future is not something we wait for. It is something we shape. The most powerful technology is not artificial intelligence or nanobots or spaceships. It is the values we choose to carry forward. And in that truth lies the soul of tomorrow.